Okay, who is Raul? I'm the founder at AdMediaService.net. I am an um, OPS, OPS, oh, oh wow, we are so lead. <laughs> I'm an OPST and OPSA certified from Isacom, and I push it too much. <laughs> talk, talk. I talk myself? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and we were one of the key contributors of the OSDEM, Open Source uh, uh, Security Testing Methodology Manual, OSSTMM from Isacom, and I'm as well into OWASP Italy, Italian ch chapter, and in TSTF, Telecom Security ta Task Force. Uh, I am the co-manager of the Carrelia Style Project, and I'm also the pro project ma manager for HPP, Echoes Profiling Project down, down at Isacom. Well, I'm Mayam. Most of you know me because of my strange uh, shirts. I work as a security evangelist for a security company in Italy, in uh, Verona, uh, but mainly security is not only uh, something that permits at the end of the month to pay uh, the rate of my car, but uh, something in which I believe very, very strong. Uh, for this reason, I invest all my free time inside uh, some non-profit organization whose common aim is uh, to promote uh, uh, security and to create awareness about problems that technology created to everyone. Obviously, I'm involved in Crystal, uh, Hakey's profiling project, and I'm the founder of uh, Recursiva Org. Uh, I'm really sorry, but we will be forced to talk about some tools that are not allowed uh, in Germany. I don't think it makes any sense. Uh, uh, that is, you can read that, uh, read that link for uh, some more uh, details about it. Who is not, uh, uh, have no information about this problem and this, I can say, fucking, fucking loud. I think that. <laughs> So, in Italy, in Italy, our stupid politics have, have not been able yet to do such a bad thing, but I'm sure they, they will. They are actually, working on it. Yeah, actually, there have been like three months ago, a very smart politician man that uh, asked, that made a proposal in order to filter uh, whenever you go online and you insert uh, bo b b bombs or whatever, on the search, search engines, and they were th think, thinking it wa wa was a smart idea. So that's the situation. Okay, let's start. Thinking about, uh, talking about what is a SCADA, we would start with a little video uh, that uh, will show you that the company is starting taking care about SCADA security, but do it in the wrong way. Shut it down. Can't shut it down. Override it. Not responding. Suki. 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 How secure is your business? UBS Security. So. Of course, if a small company such EDS, they decided to produce this very cool advertisement, a commercial one is because SCADA security for sure is where the money will be, but also where the fun is going to be in the next years. So SCADA stands for Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. In a few words, is that branch of an um, automated infrastructure that decides what to do on the basis of what is happening. So if a bad thing is going to happen, SCADA should realize that it's going to happen some shit and take some actions. As an example, this is an example of a nice SCADA interface. That's for the pumps, uh, liftons and whatever. So we mo mo monitor all the li levels all around and you can understand when something wrong is going on or is not. We are talking about nothing new. Industrial automation is something very used since uh, many years. The real problem is about problem, uh, persons, that people that is managing uh, this kind of technology uh, because everyone is still thinking about serial connection mod, uh, or a dedicated cable um, while all those devices 
are migrating uh, because of economics, because uh, to produce cheaper uh, devices, uh, to standard with, the so, le uh, with legacy operating system and uh, connected, for example, to the Ethernet networks uh, and TCPIP. And obviously, this changed completely the security of the infrastructure. You are no more with a cable that you are sure who is on each side uh, of the cable. And uh, until we are talking about some pumps in your produ production environment, uh, you can damage production. You can make some customers uh, very sad. But if your pump is something about uh, a golf uh, or something like that, you can erase a, a little city or something like that. So uh, it's terrible. Uh, think that one of the most used measures to protect uh, SCAD infrastructure uh, is security through obscurity. Think that most, mat we know that it don't work. Uh, most material we are uh, presenting you can be easily retrieved uh, on internet. Uh, uh, and this particularly uh, scurrying uh, because of this. Yeah, actually we did some, I have to say, some chat things around. Um, all the times that we say SCADA, and that's why we don't want to analyze only SCADA, but as we state there, all the CI, the critical infrastructure adductors, we are talking about plans for pa power, electricity, nu nuclear, gas, oil, wo wo water, and whatever. And the bad point is that security is not there at all. Uh, we are going to show you, we are going to detail you, thank, thank you so much, some incident that, that happened already, but to give you the idea, the first SCADA incident uh, we know about, we are aware about, happened in 82. So it's more than 25 years ago, even more. Uh, what we have here? Yeah, uh, the parts. Let's say that we don't have enough time, of course, to go into details, but we will be happy at the end for the Q&A to answer you and to go into details. But if, you want, if we want to have an ugly level view, uh, SCADIN's first start reductor is composed by HMI, the human machine interface, and we are going, we are going to tell uh, to talk about the, this. The RTU, the, the remote ter terminal U unit, all the old PLC stuff, and then we have all the communication infrastructure around. The, the idea is to explain that we are not talking about a little local network, but something that is geographically uh, distributed, distributed and involves a lot of things. Like happen in uh, NL, NL is a uh, I think in, Italy, in Italian we pronounce, uh, pronounce it NL. Uh, is the biggest power distributor in Italy, and they have uh, a, um, not a customer, but a fornitore. A vendor. A vendor, a vendor that is providing them these uh, devices, the devices and published on their website a case history at this link without saying nothing to NL. So they have a lot of information disclosed about their network. They are basing their security on uh, security through obscurity and that is wi are widely available uh, for everyone. Uh, when we are talking about uh, SCADA issues, uh, we look at some slides presented by people that usually talk at events reserved uh, for SCADA uh, persons, and we can find those information, they are really scared because they realize that people is talking about SCADA security. They realize that exists some database password published on the internet is terrible. Hackers is taking care about SCADA. They are really scared. The problem is obviously not that people is talking about SCADA. That's a good thing. <laughs> That's a good thing. Problem? Uh, born in a different situation. O often people say it's a technological problem, it's a fault of vendor, is the customer that is stupid, incidents happen, okay, many things altogether. Every incident, every uh, problem have many components uh, behind. For example, for example, as we stay there, yeah, we can, we can yeah. do the opposite. I will present this and you the next. Oh, my friend, okay. yeah. Uh, 
shit happens, I love this expression, uh, it happens that, that a pipeline explodes. The problem is that when it explodes, uh, this is about one and a half uh, mile, mile. Uh, and this is a park where families go to eat and have picnic and play with kids. Uh, uh, some people die during this explosion. Three people, yeah. three teenagers, guys. They had all the technology and all the um, to provide some uh, for tolerance. They had two computers, they separated networks, uh, uh, two servers, a lot of things. The problem was the software house was working on the database while the pressure, pressure was uh, increasing. And so uh, the pipeline stop, uh, exploded and uh, all uh, the gasoline inside it uh, start burning and people die. The important thing is in the report that you can find at this link. By, by the COB. Uh, they, they underline that computers can save lives. If computers work in the right way, can save some people. But here you can read only the um, official report. In other incidents, there are some more information. Okay, uh, in this case, uh, it was uh, sent to us uh, from uh, a friend that is around here. Yeah, Emerson, thanks to Emerson. If he is around, I don't see him. But. Uh, if you read the official report, they say, okay, something exploded, no one died, everything is okay, uh, we will fix everything, uh, no problem at all. Uh, uh, it was an incident, uh, shit happens. Uh, we, we did everything to make it secure, but uh, it didn't work. The problem is when you know someone inside, oh, was, this was yeah. the report, <laughs> okay, you just, excuse me. <laughs> But if you know someone inside that can uh, explain you what really happened, reality often is really different uh, and is not a technological problem. Shit happens, okay, I know about it, but often is people that act without thinking. And this is one of the main problem about SCADA. But yes, also technical problem exists. Yes, but as we said, there's no patch for you, 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 human stupidity. So. I have a t-shirt with, with that written on it. Yeah. <laughs> well, then it may be, it may sound crazy for you. We are from IT, we love security, and I'm going to talk to you about antivirus, the most stupid thing in the world. Uh, in SCADA, they don't use AV. I'm going, going to explain you why. Uh, the antivirus would degrade too much the CPU and why it is so important in SCADA? Because in SCADA, uh, they get mo mo money for every se second, let's say, of activity. So they can't take expose to any risk to lose short and small timings. So, for, for example, they, they don't have any AV. And to give you the idea, do you remember the slammer? It has been a nice, a nice toy. Uh, it happened, this is from the NIST. It happened that uh, this uh, nuclear power plant, a nuclear power plant, okay, uh, had the safety monitoring system disabled for clo close to five hours because of a worm in 2003. Then, uh, well, uh, we know that using patch in uh, IT environment is bad. For example, happened to me uh, some months ago that uh, a new Microsoft patch will uh, made all Windows printer of many computers stop working. Very bad. You are no more able to print invoices and so on. But if the same happen while you are managing a power plant, is something worse. So, uh, I'm so really we, scared when I read this. We started to investigate and to ask to some, uh, so to some customers around, hey, but how often your vendor, your SCADA suppliers send, sends you the patch? Every month, every two weeks, once a year. 
and they were angry because this means that one time every year that they have to get Kubernetes to stop everything and patch once a year. Uh, right. I forgot to explain that uh, uh, we are presenting materials, yes, taken from the internet, but also some taken from our everyday job. Uh, and the problem is some customers uh, sign a disclosure agreement to publish some uh, information. Uh, this customer they didn't don't. <laughs> sign it. So, uh, so we are we we have to write in this way. So, uh, you don't have patch, so you want to know at which risk you are exposed. Let's do pen testing. Let's see uh, what is left behind, what, uh, what bugs are forgotten, what you can do to fix something. So start, for example, uh, uh, with a pink sweep, something very stupid, simple. We are talking about simple, uh, small, cheap devices uh, with small CPU, but still running uh, often uh, operating systems that are not legacy in some cases, uh, it's the case of PLC often, uh, that have no, for example, a full IP stack uh, and will react in very strange ways uh, to normal traffic. In this case, nothing happened, but think if someone was near uh, this uh, arm uh, would have his head cut the off, uh, so That's not a good idea. So, you cannot use antivirus, you cannot use patch, you cannot pen test if you are not really careful. The only solution appear to separate. Yeah, but again, they should do these kind of things that are so okay to us, they are so clear to us. So we're talking about VLAN, we're talking about DMZ and so on. But again, they don't do it. They can't do, 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 do it or it's so hard for them to do it. And we, did, we decided also, Ma, Ma, Ma and me, to bring you, to show you some interview that we have been able to do uh, both with the end users and the vendors as well, because they need to explain us why it is so hard for them to apply this st st standard approach. Be before the interview, uh, the real problem here is, as I said before, people, uh, they are still thinking about serial cables. Uh, arrive, the technician ask you for an IP address for the PLC and they give them a normal IP address of the network so you can find PLC connected on the same network of uh, secretaries, PC uh, and so on. So uh, think about a virus that uh, is uh, blocking your network, will block everything. Also the SCAD area. Obviously vendors will say what? It's a customer fault. <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. Audio. Allora, molto spesso uh, troviamo delle forti resistenze da parte dei clienti. Trovano che attrezzarsi per garantire la sicurezza dell'infrastruttura sia una complicanza eccessiva. Allora, se poi si rende necessario anche un adeguamento della topologia di tutta la rete, i requisiti sembrano davvero problemi insormontabili. So, obviously the vendors say it's a customer fault. They are not providing enough budget to protect the networks. But often, if you look at their products, you find a lot of problems. You are thinking insecure by default reading those characteristics. But it's the same I was talking before. Uh, you can use data encryption, but using data encryption will mean uh, having a more Slow down the performances more powerful CPU and so more, no more cheaper product and uh, your, uh, another vendor will, will sell instead of you. So this is the standard, no authentication, uh, it makes me laugh. Uh, we, are, uh, we are thinking about, you are uh, typing three times your password in, the, in a wrong manner and your account will be blocked. Uh, think about, oh, uh, the nuclear plant is exploding, do you remember your password because my account is locked? So obviously you cannot use authentication in that situation. And uh, so you have to care about physical security. You have an unlocked terminal, but you must pr uh, be sure that no one that is not authorized will uh, come Enter. in front of the terminal. Another video uh, about uh, how to interact uh, with the, um, 
industrial automation devices. Uh, I cut some parts to make it short. Please understand that this information is extremely sensitive and could be dangerous in the wrong hands. Be discerning when sharing this information with others. The first thing we need is a scanner program. Most hackers would probably use a program called Nmap, but today I'm going to use a program Allow called SuperScan because it runs on Windows and is clearer to see on a video. Here's my SuperScan program. I'm going to start off by entering a range cool of numbers one. here. The I right wish Theodore the was, was here. Scan, and then hitting the start and button here. And you can see here the computer is being scanned by the program, and the program is attempting to discover what applications are running on it. It's now completed, and we can now look by scrolling down. That there are a number of programs available, a number of computers with a number of programs. Of interest are the ones with the little squares beside them. Number 225, oh. 230, and 238. This first computer we see in the list is running HTTP, the hypertext transfer protocol, and it's probably some sort of web server. But the 230 is running some protocol called Modbus, probably one that the hacker wouldn't know. What is that, he wonders. And what does he do next? Well, he has to find out about the when Modbus you say protocol. Hackers, he, he wants to say terrorists. Some of those keywords like Modbus, uh, TCP, port 502, and specification. And search for those. In German, because it is unlawful, because you can and right find off some the information bat, what does he discover? Okay. The open Modbus TCP specification. He can now go in and have a look at this and discover how the protocol works and how he might be able to attack it. Here he has the whole open Modbus TCP specification in front of him, and he can scan down through it and quickly discover a series of function calls and commands that will allow him to do things like read and write to the PLC. Say, for example, that he finds force multiple coils, an interesting command that he'd like to start with. We can go and have a quick look at that. Here's the force multiple coils command with a complete layout of what a message should look like if you want to force coils in a PLC. At the bottom is an example on how to write three coils in a Monocon 984. Below that is the hex code you'd actually need to enter into a message you want to send to the PLC. He can take a sample of this particular command, copy it, and using a hex editor, for example, one here, he could build a file like this one based on what he just learned in the specification. In this case, we'll call this command relay off, and we'll also create a second one called relay on. The hacker would use netcat, which you can see here, along with the attack address of the device we want to attack, port 502, and the string in the file we just created a few minutes ago, relay off, to be able to control the light. He could also use the string relay on to be able to turn the light back on. Clearly, this doesn't take a lot of skill. This is a very, very basic attack that requires a very simple tool, netcat, and a basic lookup of the Modbus protocol. <laughs> okay, before we continue, we have a question for you. Have you been able to re recognize the guy over there, the very stupid one? Because me and Mayam, it's two years that we think that he is the son of uh, the actor from ba ba uh, Back to the Future. He's the same, he's the same guy, I think, <laughs> after years and years of that. <laughs> Okay, let's continue. No, well, we decided to show you this video clip, even if we know that it's very lame, the, the way he attacks and whatever, just to show you that it was impossible 20, 15, even 10 years ago to find so much documentation all around about SCADA because, as we said at the beginning, it was really security through obscurity. Uh, to the day, as the cool guy showed to us, it's really so easy to, do, to be able to do some tricks. Okay, we said that vendor are saying it's a customer fault. In your opinion, what customers will say, oh, let me think. Uh, here we, we, do, we, we don't have the DA, so we change the data. We have implemented the monitoring of some cabinets of distribution of high tension, and the Titanic has been 
nessuno dei parametri era personalizzabile o modificabile. Abbiamo dovuto creare una nuova rete esclusivamente per quegli apparati, con quel che ne consegue in termini di firewall, switch, VLAN e connettività. Ora ci preoccupiamo sempre di richiedere che le soluzioni proposte possano essere integrate nella nostra infrastruttura di controllo e gestione. So the customer is saying they forced me to divide into multiple networks, the fucking vendor. It's a security measure. Uh, okay, maybe the product was not the best on the market, was, um, was not perfect. Okay, but often on customer networks you can find some problems that are quite common. So all networks are all together, uh, but from every point of view, voice, data, SCADA, uh, web servers published on the internet, everything on the same network, and uh, why uh, consultants have to work to connect to your network. Uh, you must give them a sim simple access. Uh, why changing the default configuration? They are working. It's so nice, it's not a fault, it's nice. Uh, they it's are so working. Lovely. So, uh, it's true. We are talking about small, stupid devices, but they have a little of configuration too. So please take a backup of it, because when that device will broke, you will be able uh, to have everything working again in a very small time. And thank you for your disaster recovery plan into your uh, forte? Uh, safe into your self block uh, that you never taste because testing it uh, cost money so and they paid a bunch of m m money, money for that yeah. it's ISO certified and whatever but they've never tried if it works or not so the problem is you know when the problem will occur no no one know if it will work or not but then we have the people people again is a is a insecure thing and we are going to explain you why in the past this was kind of a SCADA console, okay? We are, we are in the 70s, 80s, 80s, or whatever, 80s, I think, yeah. So the SCADA operator, the new nuclear plant, plant was used to stay in, the, in this room, on this desk, and to ma manage all the stuff. To the day, we this moved was a, the... This was yeah. a training station, you know? For Lexi the trains, glass. yeah. That was for the trains. Specific yeah. button, over specific there. lever. Over there. Or a subway, maybe, yeah. as well. A subway. Well, today, they moved to this stuff, to this tank. So, can you imagine the same operator, director, 60 years old man, that today, he has to re realize and understand what to touch and to move in order to do what? And obviously, no one teach them nothing. So, uh, you understand that that computer that you have here is so similar to the computer you have at that home. That you have at home. And so, again, we don't have... Huh? Yeah. Huh? And so? That's why we were, tell, we were tell, telling you about uh, human bugs, and we are telling about the PC that is so si si similar, maybe it's the same that you have at your apartment, and again, we don't have an NDA here, but this is so funny, so we had to put this. Uh, again, the same CSO of the same com company that didn't allow us to explain, to give any details. This has been a SCADA incident. Uh, explain that, that one, one day everything was down. So the emergency t team, they started to run over there and see what, what the hell was going on. And they found the idiot over there watching a movie on a D DVD. So, of course, the, C the CPU was down and uh, everything wa was unresponsive. And then, Ale, are you going to talk to us about ergonomics? Yeah, uh, I will talk about one, this is also of so my, nice. <laughs> one of my preferred books. You can find some excerpts of it on Google Books. Uh, this man is uh, very famous and very old. He takes care about uh, ergonomic uh, in technology since a lot of years. He was saying in the 70s, when I give a command to my computer, I need uh, something, a, a, a feedback to know that my computer is processing my command. Think about uh, your ball on your Macintosh or your uh, Clesidra on your uh, window. That's, that's, that's tough on okay. Now. <laughs> uh, now, and between her, uh, 
all the things he takes care about, he also takes care about uh, critical infrastructure. This is a nuclear plant uh, console where there will two live completely equal, same color, same shape, same position, two completely different functions. So people working there realized they were, uh, maybe they will use the wrong leaf. It's very simple, so they changed the leaf with beer leaf not to be in fault when touching them. And um, his book is very cool also because he's talking about uh, human errors. The power plant exploded because uh, of a human error. The operator didn't realize that when he pushed the button to uh, open uh, the valve uh, to put water on something that was um, very hot, it was not working because he didn't notice the, the lead that was uh, saying the system is faulty, the system is faulty. Then he started looking at the case, studying on it. Well, where was the lead? This is the button. The lead is behind the person that was the pressing back. the button. <laughs> this is not an, a person... A human mistake. A human mistake, it's but up. was a design mistake. Uh, obviously, we are talking about things that happen, but often people want some things that happen. This person thought they fired me without any reason, so I need some... Um, A revenge. A revenge. And so, he thought this was a good revenge. The real problem, he, he was not more working there, and he had still Access. wireless credentials, still active, still working, and he was able to introduce and make this. Very impressive is this book. Yeah, we have found this nice book that we suggest to you at the Abyss. And the author, he has been a nice guy helping Mr. Dagon in the years. And when he retired, he decided to retire this book and to explain some obscure stuff. So we, did, uh, we discovered that back in the 80s, the US was s selling SCADA so 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 software back to Russia, and they intentionally inserted some mistakes in the code. Uh, so it happened at one time was here. Uh, a three ki kiloton explosion intentionally caused by the US in Siberia that, that in 82. And as far as we know, this has been the biggest explosion from no uh, mi mi military. Uh, uh, Non-nuclear. Non non being, ab being able to be seen from the, the, to say the sky, the, yeah. uh, the moon. We are very late, so I think we yes, should we run. Run, run uh, mean newspapers are full of articles talking about fucking hackers uh, that are doing worse things. Uh, here, uh, some people was able through a Trojan, some sent by email, some uh, bring by uh, an insider uh, to take uh, control uh, of Gazprom and ask for some money to release this property. Uh, so, email and gas is not in the same phrase from my point of view. But we also want to point yes. uh, something about uh, uh, other incidents that happen. This has nothing to do uh, with hacking. With we know. Or hacking, is uh, that? Nor this, nor this. But this means that also physical security is real important and you have to take care about this. Uh, Often, when we talk at some events, uh, someone refer, reverse uh, at us like terrorists because we give a lot of uh, terrible information. information. Don't panic, please. Uh, there is no problem. Everyone, everything can be fixed. Even if... <laughs> but, actually, we are not here to tell you fake things. When we are talking today about SCADA security, it's like when we were observing the IT security 10 years ago, five years ago or so. They are like mm, in the past. So all the things that, as we explained at the beginning, are so clear and easy for us and our standards, the, these th things are so new for the SCADA environments. 
Technical Security Working Group is uh, working with the Homeland Security in USA uh, about the security and critical infrastructures. Yeah, and they admit that uh, whenever, all the time that we talk about SCADA security and national security infrastructures is from five to ten years ago, the le level of security they have. Have we a road to follow to fix something? Yes, exists a lot of suggestions to implement security. So we have these st 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 standards and there are a lot. And a very good ones could be here, here, the NIST, uh, they, this, this is a VA methodology specific for this industry area and so on. But again, we have an issue. And the issue is that all the times that we talk about IT, we must care about in disorder. It must be confidential, integrity, and available. On SCADA, what do you think? It's the opposite. The info must be available at the first time, then integral, and then only at the end, it must be also confidential if you still have the time to think about it. Okay, we understand we have a problem. Then, what we can do? Mm, uh, we are friends, we already worked together since some years uh, about common things, and we asked ourselves what we can, what do, can we do to make something better in this uh, situation. A better world. And an idea, a project working only on this. Uh, made on people that is working on these kind of problems, have experience on it, want to share his experience and uh, want to help uh, in uh, create some methodology. Um, I go on. <laughs> in methodology, uh, in articles, in best practices, uh, and so on. Those are the objectives of the Our working goals. group. Uh, the idea we had, having people talking with people about this problem. Misinformation is the first problem. If we talk about it, a lot of problems will start having a solution. Exchanging experience, this is a very closed, a very served market. Uh, you they, can access... They don't talk each other and they don't want to explain their troubles outside. So it has been very hard for us to try to force them, to ask them to jo jo join with us and explain to us their exp experiences and so on. Uh, and also our aim was to uh, not take care about uh, market study that say that everything is secure, but talking with people, talking with companies, uh, test companies and see what is the real security uh, level. Obviously to write articles or to give lectures like here, but the problem is we don't want to say you have to divide in multiple volants. It's boring. Uh, people maybe, maybe already know it, but they don't do it. We want to create case history to say, hey, the other vendor is acting in this way. If you don't do it in that way, you are commercial worst, uh, you don't have enough power on the market, so please act in a more secure way and use it as a commercial argument to sell your product. The result will be more people selling more secure uh, products if more people is working on it. Obviously, uh, as we said before, also because uh, Raul is really involved in the ISACOM and the OSSSTM, uh, we plan to release a methodology to, test, to pen test these devices uh, under free documentation license so everyone can use it and also improve it. Exactly. I don't That's remember good. the next. Oh, the. Well, who we are? Oh, present you. No, wow. <laughs> this is only to show people you people that. People in the team. Oh, oh. go back too much. Okay, so this is the core team and we are going to explain you why, but for example, Mrs. Li Lisa Bortolani, she's over don't, there. Don't, no, 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 no. Oh. don't oh. say I who is. He, uh, one, one, one grappa for free <laughs> for who <laughs> will be one able will to identify Elisa. But the funny thing is that Elisa, she's not an hacker, she's not an XE, she's not a whatever. Uh, she studied psychology 
ecologist, and you may ask yourself, wh why do we have two acres? Uh, well, it's okay. And others to arrange guys all together. Because we think, as we are explaining you, that to really take care about SCADA security, you, we must not only have a technical approach, and a technical approach would be to analyze, to pen test, and to hardening, maybe, but also uh, from another view. So, are we able to measure the SCADA security? Are we able to educate? Are we able to? Uh, Analyze if the ergonomics in an HMI is correct or not, is good or not. One, one of the aim is also to, uh, for example, instruct uh, companies on how to uh, create an emergency team in their internal infrastructure. Uh, for example, uh, the NIST uh, NIST uh, is giving precise uh, indication on how uh, a team must be composed, for example, from a manager that is able to get budget uh, for problem, a technician, IT technician that know about Ethernet networks, a SCADA technician that know about PLC because often two words are completely different uh, and uh, have a team that is able to afford any problem. So we want not only to take care, as we said, about technical but also organization. We involved a lot of organization on it, uh, for example, IPSI, uh, it's uh, the Italian chapter of the international uh, uh, organization ISSA that take care about um, security. Uh, all members are security professionals uh, and so on, Unicri, but from the UN is an, an agency of the UN that takes care about uh, women justice all over the world. Let me and obviously address. our companies because of our time, our uh, weekends and the evenings and all yeah, the time yeah, that we spend. Yeah, you know. So until now we've been able to the, write a pa paper for close it as the Italian Computer Security Association. We're talking about 120 pa pages or whatever about SCADA security. We've been all around in Italy, Europe, Asia as well, <laughs> like in the box in Malaysia and KL, Kuala Lumpur, to talk, talk about the SCADA. We love so much to go in universities and explain to the to students about SCADA security because we do think that there will be the tomorrow for all of us. In, Italia, in, in Italy, exist a lot of uh, universities that have a specific course uh, yeah, about industrial automation, but this course have no security at all. At all. They don't cover the IT security to topic at all, and they think it's the same kind all over. But uh, the most good thing that we've been able to do with Credit Digital is that we have a public case that we are authorized to show you and to go into the details. Uh, this happened because uh, we asked to all the companies that for free they want to jo join our search to authorize us. So these are the ones that authorize us. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The others means more than 80, <laughs> okay? So they only a few authorized us. If, if your company want to join the project, you are welcome. Please okay. come there, drink a grappa with us, <laughs> and talk about it's it. It's okay. <laughs> Let's show the video. Oh. We are proud of the thing we are going to show you now. It's very, very neat. Let's go. Marco Ivaldi, researcher. Those are the companies joining the project. They produce everything from early liquid to shoes to whatever. And choose one. Who we'll choose one? We love a special effect. We wear kiddos. Also, two is important. We don't only love, love IT.
video was made for hacking the box, so we choose to make these strings exactly. for uh, the XSS. Uh, well, two words about the case history. Uh, why Sovemma uh, between, among all customers? Uh, Sovemma is, uh, they create machines to build, to build. batteries of, for cars. Uh, they are the largest vendor of this in the world. And uh, uh, think about uh, a device to create a machine a car's battery for floor full of acid and people inside. So very bad, because if acid come out, people will die. If acid come out, pollution, pollution explosions, very bad. Uh, so they, t they really take care about security, uh, and this was their way of working. Uh, they was working with the devices we, they were able and used to use, they found on the market. Then some cl customers start asking for no more serial profi bus or so on connection but for ethernet solutions so they had a problem how can you can we afford this problem and giving the same security we always gave about this the same checks they uh, are been able customer. to meet us <laughs> yeah they asked us please uh, help us in creating a secure solution they booked many devices, they booked, uh, they make some internal tests, they, phone, they found the product they thought was the correct one and create a new infrastructure for those customers and obviously to develop a new product to sell them. Uh, so they still have uh, their internal test, the, the old internal test bed, they create a new one, Ethernet based, with all uh, was needed. Obviously, we don't have a four floors uh, machine attached to our test bed, but we had something that was able to give us a visual alert uh, about what was happening. If we will be able to give to machine some uh, comments, we make nothing explode, but we see that something happened. So, this is the test bed. Will, yeah. uh, our way of working, we assembled the test bed, uh, we connected to it, uh, make some tests, see what the results and found something. And the heck something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, topology of test bed, I didn't press it. Topology was uh, the visual controller uh, on this network connected to this through Ethernet cables on a switch. And this display was giving information to a machine like that, maybe connected to it. Cables were uh, closed, circu cor uh, corto circuitati. Oh, I don't know, but it's okay. <laughs> shortened, shortened, yeah. What we used, something is legal. Brain. Oh, our brain, no. because it's important, <laughs> we still have a couple of neurons around. And is map to meet. Is the brain an is brain an aching too? Is it uh, legal? <laughs> it in I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not that sure. <laughs> then, this uh, is of course to be sure to not forget to not lose small and stupid things. Water shark uh, to zoom in. And for example, we discovered that water shark per per perfectly supports the, C the CIP standard. And then some scripts, some commands, some X, our experience, uh, and so on. CIP is common industrial protocol, is one of the protocol used to communicate in this environment. Uh, obviously, we start with some port scanning uh, to search for services, uh, and we try to interact with these services. Uh, the real problem is we had uh, not so much time as we want, uh, because this was a real cost for the company, because they were in the, uh, investing in one engineer with us for the whole day, uh, working on this, and us working on this. Uh, so they wanted to be sure that nothing very bad uh, was happening, but in my opinion, something more was to we be found. We could have done some more. Yeah, some the good news, the bad news is 
fucking service is very bad configured and so on, the good news is you can do nothing uh, through those services uh, to reconfigure, change the, act, uh, uh, the way of acting of the device. The same for the display. Uh, could be uh, accessed, you can do a lot of things, but nothing that can change his way of acting. He had not enough time to work on this because, in my opinion, it was very, very <laughs> it bad. It's going to be shit, yeah. Uh, as we said before, uh, we have we some OSI scripting on the web managing interface, but the nice thing is about well, Shark and about, the CRT, I think. Yeah. As uh, he said before, clear text traffic with a known protocol that at uh, Workshark is uh, able, able to the code, uh, but does not exist in this moment available to the public uh, a program that is able to inject uh, or interact with this protocol. But we already know about it, the real problem. Uh, was about Daniel of service because those devices are really silly. So very stupid operations were able to make it crash completely unresponsive even for three minutes. And uh, uh, in this case, you don't know what's happening on the real machine. And the bad thing is that whenever you, you try to explain these things to the co companies, they produce this, this crap, they answer, Oh, but why should you send a ping to my machine? Say, idiot, it's for a test. That's why. Do you understand if your TCP IP stack it's okay or it's not, or it's not okay? Okay, we are fast enough. Five. We, oh. we are at the end. Okay, resume. So, our consideration those devices are really simple to those. We already know about it. Some stupidity in it. There are some stu stupid things, but nothing so, so bad. Let's say average stupidity. But as we said before, uh, if we had a tool able to interact with the protocol, we can do more. For this reason, we made a little to-do list about things to do. First of all, involve more people. If you are interested in this problem, if you are if you have something to say, please contact us, write us, drink a grappa with us, uh, do something, but collaborate with the project. Uh, and uh, uh, collaborating with the University of Verona, we are trying to release a periodic bulletin about market status uh, made on uh, some questionnaires compiled but by some customers, and obviously to create uh, as much articles about case histories as we can. Obviously, we have also some coders inside our team, so we'll try to write some tools. For the CIP injector. Yeah, and to release that methodology we were talking before. Uh -huh. Maybe may under the OSDEM. I yeah. hope so. I would like to. Conclusion, very fast. We already said about... Uh, about it, divide, divide, divide. You cannot put security on single devices, so divide, uh, divide filter. Uh, I don't know if it's about security, but often uh, redundancy will save your ass, uh, so use it often. Uh, often. And uh, documentation is important, but must be updated. And also policy, it's okay to write it, but you must apply it. Have them. And then, disable, well, again, I do think that all the things on my back are clear, so clear to us that we came from the IT, but they are not so clear uh, in the SCADA environments. Uh, one thing that we found, it is not so easy, uh, we are, well, we have been able to test, to pen test and to analyze power plants, water suppliers and whatever, so I mean big, big and we are environments. Uh, it is not so easy as it could seem to have a test bed for these guys. Okay, you know, the power distribution co company in Italy, they, they have a test, a test bed, but it took them like two years and a half to have them uh, to, for the, uh, the, them to have it ready to go and to be tested. We put as much bibliography as we can. As we could, yeah. Uh, the point uh, from start is the first link, uh, uh, NIST. it's the, the Bible about SCADA is not very deep, but will give a very uh, large point of view, and then you are able to dip 
each uh, argument. The second link and the third are two talks by some colleague that uh, are really funny because they are explaining how they defeated during a commercial visit some, <laughs> some critical infrastructure. infrastructure. So real fun. The other links uh, are obviously interesting. Feel free to consult it. Yeah, and go around. Say thank you to... We have to say thank you to Studio Miliani because this guy helped us for free to do all the nice effects that we have been able to show you. So thank, thank you so videos. much. All videos. Video clips, audios, layout, the t-shirt, whatever. I forgot the Italian graffa. It's the video problem. So, one more mi minute. Okay, doing Thank you question for the time. Question time. Um. <laughs> Italian grappa. <laughs> Clever. <laughs> Clever questions will receive some grappa. Not much, not much. Thank you, guys. <laughs> the question. Uh, I was wondering, you talked about antivirus and uh, that you can run it because you needed real time performance. But the platform that's most susceptible to viruses, Windows, is not a real time operating system. Um, this, is, this confuses me. Uh, the problem uh, is about that uh, real time operation happens. Uh, the grab is for you. Uh, the real-time operation happens on, uh, the, the, uh, on the devices that are really tailored uh, to do some specific tasks. And the HME usually is a Windows software, often a Windows software, running on a standard PC. Italian Rappa! Oh, pr press ESC, please, press ESC. <laughs> while the um, human machine interface is running a standard operating system that is monitoring those devices. The operating system is not real time, we know about it, but managing that data is uh, often important. Also, some vendors try to implement encryption or to implement uh, antivirus, I think that Klamav is open source, uh, and uh, also some uh, IPsec stacks uh, are uh, free and open source. And some vendors try to implement it on their small and tailored devices to manage the data, but it didn't work very well. Uh, there are some examples of uh, still sold on the market uh, uh, devices that you can put in a transparent way uh, to encrypt, for example, information, but all those devices will insert a latency and uh, that make people, uh, things not working fine. For the Windows devices, if you use the NVIDIA chipset on ASUS boards, maybe? For the Windows device? For Windows computers, there's an NVIDIA chipset, many people know it, I think, on standard PC motherboards, and they have a hardware firewall functions. So you can have a packet filter on a Windows machine without, without performance penalties, okay? Grapper for you. The, the problem, as usual, as I said before, is not about a technological problem. Some tools uh, are available, uh, some things can be done. The problem is uh, with implementing this, is not doing it. Uh, the vendors are not often, they are not proposing the right solution because of they need cheaper solutions. But then it w would avoid your patch problem and your upgrade problem and your uh, performance problem on the Windows platform. So. The, performance pro the performance problem exists. Uh, it is often an excuse for people to refuse to implement it, but the problem exists. You have to manage it uh, as usual, but the problem exists. More questions. More questions. Who wants grappa or questions? Grappa or question? 
<laughs> What's the difference? Why is everyone uh, going out? Ah, you want it all in grappa? No, no, no. Crazy. No. More questions, or you can say you goodbye? Goodbye. <laughs>